Hey everybody, it's Emily at Art Schooling, and today I'm going to be doing a video about what I'm doing with my nine-year-old this month for school. If you watched my previous video about what we're doing for school this year, you would have heard me talking about my big plan for our monthly units. Basically each month we just focus on a specific unit study as opposed to just doing all the subjects every day. So last month we studied Korea and it was a lot of fun and we learned a lot and we had this big Korean feast at the end. It was delicious. I highly recommend geography studies if for nothing else you get to eat so many different kinds of food. This month she requested a science unit so we are doing chemistry and I thought it'd be fun to show you the resources I am using. So first up I have Atoms and Molecules with 25 Great Projects. This is from the Explore Your World series and I love these books. They're great. They have a lot of great information and easy, easily digestible amounts. The way it's written is easy to understand. That's an issue I sometimes have with children's encyclopedias is that the information is too much <laughs> and the pictures are great but it's hard to digest the information they give you. These are well written and we get a lot out of them. There's a ton of project ideas. We don't do all of them. We'll pick and choose the projects that we want to complete and so we're using this as sort of our spine but we also have a couple others. I, I have Your Guide to the Periodic Table by Gil Arbuthnot. And you probably saw me talk about this book already because I had it in my pile for the Harry Potter unit when we cover potions. I thought this would make a good resource. It covers all of the elements of the periodic table. It's colorful and fun. And I also have How to Make a Universe with 92 Ingredients, An Electrified Guide to the Elements by Adrian Dingle. It's also in my Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince unit for potions, probably. Again, gorgeously illustrated, has lots of great information. It's a beautiful book. And I also have Notable Notebooks, Scientists and Their Writings by Jessica Fries Gaither. And this is a beautiful picture book and it's all about scientists and how they write down what they've learned and what they've studied in their notebooks and it gives examples of real scientists and like pictures of what their actual scientific notebooks looked like. This is a great resource. It's very inspirational. The writing is very young. It's, the text rhymes, it's cutesy, but it's not too babyish. I read this to my nine-year-old and she thought it was great, beautifully illustrated. But I read this at the beginning of the month because it's a great way to inspire your child to pick up a notebook and write things down as they're learning. I think that that's a pretty important aspect of studying science is being able to explain what you learned. So I'm hoping that she'll keep up a notebook this month and we use this for our inspiration. For our read aloud this month, I have Finding Wonders, Three Girls Who Changed Science by Janine Atkins. This is three biographies about female scientists and it's written in verse. You can see. And we actually have not started this yet because we were still finishing up the last book from our Korea unit. So we're going to be starting this probably tomorrow and I'm really excited about it. I bought this forever ago. I Probably last year and as a thought to read it with her at some point, so we're finally going to be picking this up. It covers Maria Marion, who was a naturalist. It covers Mary Anning, who collected fossils, and Maria Mitchell, who studied the night sky. So I'm excited for this. This is a book that I've actually been kind of anticipating getting to. So that is what we're reading. I also have picked up way back when Toys R Us was having their blowout sales. We went and stopped in one day to see what they had on sale and I saw this and I grabbed it because it was so cheap. It's this kit put out by Edge Science Lab and it comes with a ton of experiments. We're probably not going to do all of them. We've only done the pH scale experiment in the kit so far. And that went well, 
So I'm hoping that the rest of the kit will reflect <laughs> that, that kind of quality. This is what we'll be using this month for our experiments, along with the ideas in the Explore Your World book. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't really anticipate this month getting too wild with projects. I think that doing these science experiments is going to be project enough for me, frankly. I'm not a project person. I have a hard time focusing on, like, hands-on type things. It's just not my thing. I'm, I'm better with coming up with the book list. I can read you all the books that you want. But. So that's what we're studying this month. It's, I'm hoping it's going to be a fun month. She's excited about it, and that's what matters. So what are you guys learning this month in your homeschool? What are you reading? I'd love to hear about it. Let me know down below in the comments and we can chat. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Happy reading. Bye!